Shabbat Shalom. It's uh, Shabbat uh, morning here at the edges of the Sandiums. Uh, we'll sing our first hymn uh, before we start our episode. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tear we none other has ever known is the heavenly father thank you for the beautiful sabbath morning here in the sending sets of the sentence of Fiji. I invite your Holy Spirit to be with me and be with us viewers. Help them to understand the very important topic on the Sabbath as a test of our chassis. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's look into our text. We have been in episode 30 and on Exodus 16, it was a strange thing that God gave them the Sabbath as a test if they are going to obey, uh, listen to his instructions or not. Because the Sabbath is part of the what? Of the Ten Commandments. So uh, before they reached Sinai, he tested them. He gave two things at the same time. The manna that they ate for, um, for, for 40 days. I give you a homework assignment. I go and read that it was the angels put it in Deuteronomy. You can use the Blue Letter Bible. You can use the cross reference in the Blue Letter Bible on Exodus 16 to say, to see that it was the angels put. So he was giving them angel food and the uh, and it's ever separate related to the angel. How is it related to the angels? The the manna that the angels eat and the sabbath is the sabbath observed to in heaven. Uh, that's why it was given together with the manna. Is the angels too were created in seven days, just like us human in our new human un, uh, universe? This universe here was created in seven days. Uh, we'll. Uh, investigate in this episode 14 exodus 16 exodus 20 genesis 2 uh, revelation 14 6 7 the first angel's message does it appear too in this judgment does it appear in the judgment scene in john chapter 5 uh, where it says jesus is our judge we'll we'll see it uh, this morning to see the importance and why was it given at that time let's go back to exodus 16 which we saw on episode 13 uh, let us read on verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. That's manna. And people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day so that I may test them whether they will walk in my instructions or not. Now, verse 27. Let's jump into verse 27. It says in verse 27, I'm reading from the Blue Letter Bible. Uh, let's go back to what is, uh, what is it? verse 25. Then Moses said, Eat it today, for today is the Sabbath of the Lord. Today you will find it, not find it in the field. Six days shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the, the Sabbath, there will be none. Yet it came about on the seventh day that some of the people went out together, but they found none. Then Moses, Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? So the first thing that he gave, why did he give it in the first instance? Remember, in, in Exodus chapter 1, chapter 2, eh, you know, when uh, Moses was uh, asking God, if I go, uh, uh, Lord, what will I say that? Who sent me? And he said, I am, I am. Meaning that the Israel already know that their God, their creator God, their ancestor, their ancestor worshiper God, that was the creator, you know. Uh, he, is, uh, he is the only true God uh, related to the what? To the creation. And the, in the creation story, they know that the creation uh, God uh, it's related to the Sabbath. It was given before sin, so it was transferred, and they know it. But in Egypt, in 430 days, they were worshipping the sun. Now, the Egyptians uh, followed the, the, the Babylonian. They worshipped the sun. The, uh, it was called Ra, and it was worshipped on the first day of the week, Sunday. Uh, 
Uh, so God, Lord, as soon as they brought up oil for Egypt, he wanted them to be sure that he is not Ra, the sun god. He is not the Babylonian god. Remember, Moses, he studied Egyptian history and mythology and even he wrote this, uh, this, um, this Torah, the Genesis, on the Babylonian text. So it, it's referring to this, the chaos in the sea. That's why they had to go to the sea. So they had to, dis, uh, they had to disassociate from their belief that uh, God is the God of the chaos in the sea. Um, we will learn that later. So from the, the first uh, week and first month, God wanted them to be sh them to be sure He is not the God Ra or the Sun God uh, that uh, the Babylonian worship, or even that land that they are going to Canaan. Uh, they were Sun worshippers. That's why we learn the the tabernacle is not like the temple uh, in in this uh, Canaan land. It faced the opposite. Uh, they didn't face the east where the sun rays because they what worship the sun on Sunday and yeah. in the Bible you'll notice uh, we will go into it in the next episode uh, uh, episode 15 that they only call day one day two day three day four day five and then preparation day which we see here in, in Exodus 16 on on the preparation day you prepare what on the sixth day prepare uh, two uh, uh, portions because on the Sabbath it won't come so God was testing them. Do they believe that I am the what? No, not only the God that saved them, that redeemed them from Egypt. I am the true creator, the ancestors God, the God of Abraham. You know? So he, that's what he gave. Now let us see what does uh, it mean when it says there. And let's see what uh, Exodus 20 says uh, on about this. You know, we have to see the context of everything. So Exodus 20, let us see. Oh, is he referring to, uh, to the God in Egypt or is he referring to the creator in Genesis. Uh, the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord, verse 2, of your God, brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods but me. That's uh, the first commandment. You shall not make idols. That's the second commandment. You shall not worship them. But so in favor. Now in verse 7 it says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Now this word here, the Lord, when you see capital letters in the Bible, that's the, 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 the thumb name of, uh, of, of God. When the Israelites or the scribes come to when, they, when they're reading it in the temple, because that's the scribes read, just say, Adonai, oh Lord, I will just keep quiet. Yahweh. Now, the reason I'm not reading in the Fijian Bible, because they are abusing that name. Uh, uh, that's why go, go, uh, Jesus said, when you want to pray, pray in the name of what? Pray in Abba Father. That's the new covenant. That's uh, the co new Israel co uh, covenant with God. You don't have to mention his tabu name because that name was only known to the Israel and they respected that commandment. And that's why I'm not reading, reading in the Fijian Bible or doing the Fijian session on this because you know, because I'll read that tabu name. Uh, Christians now abuse that name. They're seeing that holy name, that transcendent name, which the scribes and the Israel respected, revered, because it's one of the great commandments. So the safest way to do is just say Abba Father. Do not be, be too smart. Uh, that's one of the deceptions of the devil is for you to break off the great commandment, you know, calling out his thumb name. That's why Jesus already said, when you pray, pray our Father in heaven. Now, the fourth commandment, it says, for, uh, remember the Sabbath, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and you do all the work. And then the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You know, you shall not do your work, your son, your daughter, your male slave, say uh, your female slave or your cattle even the animals or your resident who stays with you for in six days the lord made heavens and the earth and sea and everything that is in them he rested on the seventh day and for that reason the lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy so he's referring to the god of creator not only the god that uh, saved them from egypt so he was referring to the god of creator so it was very specific and uh, he was very particular on that before giving the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments is it, what? It's just the, uh, uh, the, the character of God. In the beginning, the Holy Spirit uh, 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 hovered over this chaotic world uh, that was not uh, created, you know, was in chaos. So God created everything, parted the waters and then uh, made the seas, you know, parted the seas and then made the four rivers. And that is what he's referring to. Now, let us look into our text. Does it refer to the judgment? Yeah, let us look into our text. Does it refer to the judgment too, this uh, Sabbath or no? Let's, uh, let's look into what? Genesis, uh, uh, not Genesis, Revelation 14, because of the first angel's message, you know, the everlasting gospel. So let us read on that. 
Does it mention to this God or God the uh, Creator? Uh, let us see. Uh, Revelation chapter 14. Uh, it's talking about 144,000 in Mount Zion. Uh, Zion. That is uh, when Jesus comes, he will be in Mount Zion. And then it says in um, verse uh, 6, vision of the angels. That's the series, the name of our series. Judgment is the everlasting gospel. And I saw another angel flying in the mid heaven with the everlasting gospel to preach to those who live on earth and every nation, tribe, language, and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God. That means respect God, honor God, worship God. And give him glory because of the how his judgment has come. So yeah, his judgment is already done, going on. Because when Jesus went up, he, he went up as a high priest and a, a priest. Worship him for me made the heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. So in the same context, when God wants to create something, and that's what he did. He created the world in six days and on the seventh day, on Genesis chapter 2, he said he rested on him and he blessed it and sanctified it uh, and gave it as a blessing to men. So for men to know who is God, to worship his to, to God, it's in the Sabbath. That's the seal. What is the name? The name of God is gives it. Eh, the Lord, that is Tabu. They, they never mention, you know, Yahweh. Uh, some translated in Jehovah. Uh, in, but it's Yahweh. But he, what he said, his name is Yahweh. And he controls what? He made the heaven and earth. If you see the president seal, you just look up into the internet and you see the seal of the, it says his title, the president, and then what he covers, the United States. And now, what's the seal of God? It's in the Sabbath. You will never find any other thing. And remember, when 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 uh, Nicod, uh, when uh, um, what is the tax collector was baptized, you know, in was, was accepted, justified, you know, righteousness, uh, Luke eighteen and Luke nineteen, which is Zacchaeus, he was covered by Christ's righteousness, and the gift was the Holy Spirit. What's the jo uh, work of the Holy Spirit? To write the laws. The commandments of God. We already seen uh, last episode. The commandments are righteous in, the, uh, in, uh, in uh, Romans chapter 2. Uh, do we nullify in, by, by the commandments? No. Because it's the very nature, the, the nature of God. It's the righteousness of God. Uh, when you do the, uh, the uh, you, uh, when you keep, when you love God, you will follow the first four commandments. And if you love your uh, your neighbors as you love yourself, which is the golden rule, you, 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 you don't do those things. Uh, so that's why it was not nullified in the cross. That's why it's always mentioned. Whenever it mentions, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes and God wants to reform, the first thing he does is the Sabbath. So in the last days, that is the test of faith. In America, it's going to happen. It happened in 1800s. It's already uh, done, you know, the Sunday, Sunday law. It's, it, it's coming, you know. So the last day is just worship. Worship on the Sabbath or worship on the Sunday. You know, it's the sun worship. Uh, that's a fact. So... You have to know when you come to Christ, just like when we left. Remember what Paul says, you know, what happened to the Israelites when they left the Egypt. They were sun worshippers. He reminded them before they reached Sinai that the, he is the creator God. And in Jesus, good news and the New Living Testament, uh, Testament, the Bible translation, in the beginning it was word and the word was with God and the word was God. Uh, in the good new, in the uh, Living Testament, it says, I like the way it says, uh, before everything else uh, uh, existed, there was Christ with God. And he was God, same as God. See, that's it. So everything is pointing to what? Christ. Christ, when he comes into your life, his righteousness comes because he's righteous living. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. So the first thing he, he do, he wants you to worship him. And he's sealed, that you are sealed in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. We already covered that. You know, justified. It means to that you are sealed. You are sealed in Christ by the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just come and to establish his righteousness. And one of these is how to worship him. And I hope that God will bless you. Uh, we'll go, we'll go continue on the part to um, observe uh, 15 straight after this. So let us sing our uh, new uh, appeal song. I have chosen this one because I really love it. And I know that you will love it too. I love it. Uh, I always sing it. So we'll, we'll not sing our normal uh, uh, normal uh, one, the past me not or the change of Seba. Uh, now uh, we are serious now. Uh, we want to say thank you, Lord. Uh, we will trust you now. Uh, we, uh, the Israelites didn't know, and only two people out of the two million uh, entered Canaan. We do not have to do that. So this is our appeal song. I'll sing it, and I hope that you'll sing along. Trust and obey. You'll love this one. Trust and obey. Yes, 
what did, uh, did he say? Uh, Exodus uh, 16, uh, for the manna and the Sabbath is to test you. They're to test you whether you're going to obey me or not. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory is that on our way. While he do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will try, stand obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I like the second part. Yes, only thing that God wants to th throw to us to test if we are going to obey Him. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but His smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh or a tear. Can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Abba Father, have mercy on me for your Sabbath, for I am a sinner. If you are uh, committing your life, Abba Father, help me to worship only you. Uh, you have given us, you have justified in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. The first thing they do is you have sealed us. Christ, sealed us in Christ. And the seal of Christ is in the Sabbath, the day that you are worshiped. For you created the heavens and the earth and the oceans and the sea. So, Heavenly Father, help me as I recommit my life to worship you only the day that your seal uh, seal me with your nail Jesus Christ and the Sabbath in Jesus name I pray after this state of this I'm going on to the continuation of the Sabbath uh, on, at Exodus chapter 20 